Imagine harnessing the power of a single book chapter to dramatically alter your perception of self, the world, and your divine connection. Today we plunge headfirst into such a chapter from The Journey Begins Within by Savvy. This isn't your average chapter, oh no. It's an immersive experience and a catalyst for transformation. This journey begins within you, could lead to the unearthing of your true self, and could profoundly change you. Here we go, enjoy. Sacred medicine's an instrument, not an endpoint. The wounded healer syndrome. As my life was utterly unraveling once again, unbeknownst to me then, it was the beginning of what many would call my dark night of the soul. In August 2019, I faced my deepest shadows and childhood wounds and had a decision to make. Either I would continue going my own way for the rest of my life with blinders on, or what is customary in my journey would be to confront the issues head on and prevail. Losing the love of my life had left me emotionally paralyzed and the will to live had abandoned me. I had given everything of myself and my soul to have a family, and no matter how hard I tried, I was not getting back from life the love and self-acceptance so desperately needed. Confronted with suicidal thoughts, I sought help in psychoanalysis and quickly realized that in my case, it was a lost cause and a complete waste of time and money. The pain I was feeling inside my chest was so pervasive and intense that it completely obscured my existence. I could not work, and it was even hard to breathe. It needed to be gone, or soon I would be gone. That is when something inside me started to whisper, and inspiration arrived in tiny steps. First, it began with a 40-day fast-mimicking diet, during which I limited my calories to less than 500 per day. I started meditating, and during these early days I would get downloads of complete applied wisdom. It was truly magical. My awareness of both the world, as I thought it was, and myself began to expand before my eyes. Something I couldn't understand or pinpoint was guiding my healing. I remember different people entering my life, from Reiki healers with extraordinary abilities to enlightened souls whom I didn't know then. They had participated in sacred ceremonies and knew that this reality has more secrets than the ones that meet the eye. During these days, the spirit whispered during two meditations in the early morning hours. First, stop eating all animal products. And the following week, get out of all social media. True to my persona, I complied immediately when I got guidance from the ethereal, as by then, I knew better than not to. As the pain would not subside, I was willing to do anything to be able to heal my broken heart, even if it could cost me my life. Someone suggested that I experiment with a psilocybin mushroom ceremony to try to stop the pain. Up until that day in my life, I had never done anything that could be considered a drug. So, the emotional and societal connotations of breaking with the identifications of what I was led to believe all my life were acceptable behaviors versus an unknown path utilizing what the government had designated a controlled substance were tremendous. Yet I had to muster the courage to face it head on as everything else was not working. Albeit doing all the research and concluding that they were not addictive, I did not know the consequences or long-term side effects, if any. Today I laugh as the only side effect is an awakened mind that can see through every lie ever told. Nothing had prepared me to overcome such labels. I felt ashamed for trying alternative means to heal something that was broken within. I had played by the rules. I had complied with everything I was told I had to since childhood. Study, work hard, don't cheat, play by rules, give your best, love, marry, have a family, and act with integrity. I checked every box and gave it my all, but nobody told me the truth. The truth is that society was broken to the core, that we are all entangled in perpetuating a lie, that everyone is after taking from others what is not theirs to take. And to feel whole, we break everyone else in the process. We call it just business as a disguise for the true meaning of cheating and stealing. Honor and integrity are more precious than gold today, but even more precious than this is unselfishness, a genuinely giving heart capable of providing for others with no self-aspirations. Both a blessing and a curse, giving hearts such as these are so rare that they can't conceive of imposing their selfish ways on others, as there is no selfishness in them. Hearts like these get torn to shreds in modern materialistic societal constructs because individuals such as me can't play by the low standards everyone else adheres to, including in interpersonal loving relationships. With such a heart and wholly torn to pieces, I had no choice but to dive into the pool's deep end and seek alternate solutions for uncommon situations. The first and second therapies didn't have much effect on me at all. I was left with no solutions to the gaping hole now consuming my every breath. 
The Reiki healer suggested that I learn about ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a South American psychoactive brew traditionally used by indigenous cultures and folk healers in the Amazon and Orinoco basins for spiritual ceremonies, divination, and healing of a variety of psychosomatic complaints. I had never heard the word before. I googled as much information as possible over the weekend. It was not as common as it is today, and frankly, given the illegal connotation portrayed by the ever-expanding government oversight, I was petrified. Today I understand that, knowingly or not, government's sole mission is to perpetuate the system and avoid the emergence of independent thought, as the creation of free thinkers may jeopardize the status quo. Free people, with conscious, sobering divine authority and self-worth, do not settle for blind, silent obedience. We tend to be a nuisance on the sidelines. It comes as no surprise that all these awareness-expanding medicines from nature are categorized under the same label as truly destructive substances, like other lab-made synthetic, addictive drugs, to curtail their utilization at all costs. The more I learned, the more curious I was to try. I knew that if any truth were hidden in plain sight, I would have to summon the courage to find out firsthand. I found a place in Iquitos, Peru, run by several Shipibo Indian shamans, that seemed legitimate enough to try. This tribe is well known for its relationship with the Amazon and the practice of these ceremonies. Nothing could have prepared me for the transformation I was about to experience. In my quest to know the truth, I needed to find out what was hidden behind these ancient traditions, as everything I had been taught so far in my life seemed to be a lie. I couldn't continue living in a way that was against my nature. My spirit was screaming to be shown to me. There I was only a week after I resolved to leave my old self behind, disembarking on a September afternoon in 2019 in Iquitos. After a short 20-kilometer drive into the outskirts of town and later a few more into the jungle through a dirt road, I arrived at a compound with a few thatch huts and very modest but nice bungalows with metal tin roofs. I said, wow, what a contrast from southeast Florida. The property seemed to be a bubble surrounded by an almost pristine nature. I was shown to the orientation in a common area hut, where I met a few participants already in their second or third week in the program. Everyone seemed to be friendly and had a different shine to their eyes. I was still all wound up, wounded, and closed in a defensive posture, not knowing what to expect. Two days before my first ceremony, I had to acclimate and distress. Nothing could have prepared me for what would happen during the next two weeks. As is customary with me, if I am going to do something, I go all in not halfway. So, I signed up for what is called a plant diet, an intense two-week eight-ceremony program that was supposed to heal my broken heart. Through a healthy natural diet that does not include sugar, caffeine, and salt, the body gets ready to open a gateway into other dimensions of consciousness. I will not openly share my experiences because everyone gets what is needed in their journeys. If I predispose you with mine, it is simply a selfish act to boast my ego and serves no other purpose than to say, hey, look at me, how great I am, and this is not the intent of this share. I have openly shared some but never all of these insights with other brothers and sisters who have common elements in their journeys to mine when appropriate. But to summarize, the experiences were more than revealing. I got to know the true nature of myself, nature, and the universe, life after death, and both the release of the old and the healing of my identity began. These ceremonies are not for everyone, and certainly not for the faint of heart. It will take a lot of self-determination to see them through, integrate the wisdom attained later, and do the inner work. But each ceremony is the equivalent of over 20 to 30 years of psychotherapy, in my opinion. In my opinion, it is even better because it attacks the root cause of mental distress or post-traumatic disorders by rewiring the neural pathways of the brain. Throughout these ceremonies, I freed myself from most childhood wounds and identifications. It was not an easy process, but a complementary one to my spiritual journey. A word of caution, I've seen many participating in over 20 to 100 ceremonies, and I don't judge or begrudge anyone's journeys. However, some end up caught in an escape loop where they use these ceremonies to cope instead of as a stepping tool to overcome a stage in their development. One needs to recognize this and muster the courage to confront the wreckage of the prior reality and mold it into submission by accepting and releasing it. Would I do it all over again, knowing what I know today? Yes, I would, as these tools provided me with a shortcut to the core of my being. They enabled me to free myself quickly from prior identifications 
and lighten the load on my shoulders. They also allowed me to empathize even more with others who have gone or are going through similar lessons in their lives. This enables me to be of greater service in their journeys and shed some light and hope on potential psychological and emotional traps they may be in. How do we change the world? One soul at a time. Never underestimate the power of the compounding effect. If the content moves you, we invite you to embark on your journey by purchasing a copy of the book at Amazon, Kindle, or iBook today. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring. The journey begins within. Click like and subscribe for additional details. See the video description.